Hi there, I'm Stephen Chu, a professor of psychology, and this is the third video in a four-part series on helping students to make the academic transition to college-level work. So in the previous video, I talked about specific habits that you should try to develop that will help you meet the challenges of college-level work. In this video, I'm talking about self-regulated learning, which is a high-level habit that you should try to develop which will help you not only to be successful academically, but it'll be really helpful in your career whenever you have to take on a task that requires a lot of new learning. So let's start by taking a look at the habits that we talked about last time. We talked about attending class, we talked about effective note-taking, uh, an effective study routine uh, without distraction um, that uses dif uh, uh, desirable difficulty, Assignment completion routines to make sure that you follow instructions and you get the, um, the assignment done on time. Exam preparation routines, um, obtaining and using feedback from your professor, from exams and assignments to help you get better. And then of course, regular sleep and exercise routines, which will help you not only learn better, but also to manage uh, stress and anxiety. So those are all really important uh, uh, habits to, to develop. But you also have to worry about um, the pitfalls that can uh, undermine uh, your academic success. So let's take a look at those pitfalls. So bad habits, of course. Obviously, I want you to develop good habits, but you develop bad habits like not going to class or waiting too late to prepare for exams or start on assignments, then that clearly is going to uh, be an obstacle uh, to academic success. Then in the first video, I talked about mistaken beliefs about learning. I, I called them beliefs about learning that make you stupid. There was learning is fast. Uh, the uh, idea that uh, your talent is inborn and fixed, rather a product of, of how hard you work. Um, there is uh, that learning is a matter of is learning isolated facts rather than connected knowledge. And then the fact or the belief that we can multitask. All of those are mistaken beliefs that we need to uh, avoid uh, because they undermine our, our uh, learning. Then um, a major problem for a lot of students is the use of ineffective uh, learning strategies. Students tend to think of, of learning in terms of time, how much time you spent studying. You've got to think of it in terms of how much time and quality of the study. How much time did you spend uh, in deep processing where you were thinking about the meaning of that material and uh, where you're uh, spacing out your, your rehearsal uh, so that you're having to recall it uh, and um, uh, having to uh, apply the information. So we call that uh, desirable difficulty. Uh, so you want to engage in study strategies that involve desirable difficulty like deep processing. And uh, a lot of study strategies avoid desirable difficulty. They're mindless, uh, repetitive, uh, activities like rereading uh, over and over again, or going through uh, electronic note cards where you're just memorizing isolated facts rather than understanding um, uh, uh, concepts and how they relate to each other. And then people study while they're multitasking, but they think that they've actually studied effectively because they've spent like four hours studying, even though the quality of the study is very poor because of all the distractions. Now, poor study strategies lead to overconfidence, where you think that you are uh, are prepared and you understand material when you really don't. Um, that comes from uh, really shallow, superficial study strategies. Um, and then another problem uh, is not studying to the proper level of detail. You need to study at the right level of detail and depth of knowledge that your, your professor expects. If you study at too shallow of a level, if your understanding is too shallow uh, and the teacher uh, tests you at a deeper level of detail, and nuance, you're, you're going to do poorly no matter how hard you study or how well you study. So you need to make sure that your, your study uh, uh, level is, is what the professor is, is looking for. Okay. Um, not assessing and monitoring your level of understanding. You need to take uh, opportunities uh, to uh, test yourself to make sure that your understanding is, as I said, uh, at the level that's that's expected by the professor. A great way of doing this is through uh, self-testing, uh, where you test yourself in test conditions and you make sure that you have the level of expertise and mastery uh, that, you ex that, that you need. So uh, if you're in a math class, for example, uh, and you're going to have to uh, uh, solve like six problems uh, for an exam, you need to be fast enough and 
uh, in solving those problems that you can actually get all six done uh, in an hour. It, it doesn't do you any good if you spend three hours on one problem, you're not going to uh, be very successful. And then the last one is not making full use of learning resources. And that's actually the topic of the last uh, video that will be coming up um, after this one. So all of these are common student pitfalls that you should be aware of and you should try to avoid. Now, one way of avoiding them is becoming a self-regulated learner. So um, this is a, a cycle of uh, study, a planning, study, and then evaluation. So there's three phases to being a self-regulated learner, and these all overlap with things we talked about before. First of all, there's the planning phase where you take an assignment or you prepare for an exam, you set your goals, you set your planning, learning, uh, you plan your learning strategies, how you're going to spend your time, what your sub goals are, but you know when you should have had all the reading done, you know when you should, uh, you know be reviewing. Uh, so that's the planning uh, phase. Then in the monitoring phase, you put that into practice and you monitor your progress uh, and modify if needed. So some parts, you know, the reading may not be going as quickly as uh, as you had hoped. So you need to make some sort of modifications in your in your plan uh, as you go along. Finally, there is an evaluation phase. You find some way of testing yourself and getting feedback about your level of preparation. This could be from like review questions or uh, practice questions on uh, the course website, uh, you get feedback about how well your uh, plan has worked for you. If it has worked uh, well and, and you've uh, succeeded in accomplishing your goals, then you're done. But if not, then you repeat uh, this whole process. This time, planning in light of what you have learned in the first cycle, you know, what worked for you, what didn't. So this is a, in, uh, a continuous cycle of, of learning and modification and adaptation. Here's a schematic diagram of it. You start with the planning phase over here on the left. Uh, you look at what you're trying to do. You set your goals, identify the resources that you have at your disposal, determine what kind of plan you're going to put into place. Then in performance monitoring phase, you put that, uh, that plan uh, into action you monitor how well that plan is, is working, uh, and then uh, you uh, carry out that plan. The evaluation phase, you determine if your plan has been successful or not, what kind of progress you've made, what kind of obstacles that you uh, came against that you up against that you didn't anticipate. Uh, if your goal is achieved, you're done. If your goal is not achieved, then you uh, repeat the cycle, starting with a new planning phase of, you know, now that I've learned what works and what doesn't work, especially for like this professor, the way this professor tests, uh, then uh, you change your plans and you go through the cycle again. So learning is this consistent or this constant cycle of planning, performing, evaluating, and then modifying your plans. And you become a more and more skilled learner through this process. So that's the ultimate goal, to become a self-regulated learner. Uh, if, and it's a high-level habit if you um, well, um, approach any sort of academic or learning task uh, with this kind of self-regulated uh, cycle, it will help you to be successful. So in the next video, I'm gonna talk about the resources you have available and making the most uh, of them. So thank you for paying attention on this video and I'll see you on the next one.